My name is Tim, I'm a project manager for Carbolite Gero and today it's my pleasure to introduce a special tube furnace to you. Um, it looks a little bit not like a tube furnace but in principle it's nothing else um, than a tube furnace up to 1300 degrees C. Inside this furnace we have a quartz tube only. Yeah? This quartz tube is attached here at the front side to a water-cooled tube which means that here we have the cool area and here we have the hot area with the quartz tube. What is so special about this tube furnace? We can transfer a sample manually from the hot zone to the cool zone and again from the cool zone to the hot zone again. Everything is possible by manual manipulation of it. I will show you later how it works. Everything is possible under nitrogen, but also under full hydrogen. And this is what makes this furnace so special. Manual movement of samples from hot to cold in full hydrogen atmosphere. I will show you more in detail how it works because there is one more benefit. This loading and unloading of the furnace can be done when the furnace is full under temperature. So you will see a furnace ready for loading and unloading at the same time it's at high temperature. So at the moment this furnace is at 750 degrees C but you can turn it up to 1000 or 1100 as a maximum working temperature and you see here the hot zone um, the red color clearly indicates the 750 degrees C. As this is all water cooled, it's no problem uh, to enter this zone here. So now we can put in a sample. Okay, this is only the crucible for sure. At the end, the customer has his sample there. The sample of this particular customer is um, a tube is a tube which comes into play when it comes to satellites. So it's a high frequency tube which is heat treated in this furnace. Um, but okay, it can be many other samples. Uh, annealing under hydrogen is an application which is used for various samples. Yeah, this furnace has it at its advantage when you have a small batch production because when the production is really huge, you have a continuous furnace. But for batch production, for projects, for customized heat treatments, this is the perfect solution because you immediately can have different atmospheres and your heat treatment is very easy and simple. So now I place the crucible into the furnace. Then I lock the chamber here, which is done automatically. Now the question is how to handle it and you have a huge stick and with this stick you can now go through this gas outlet and you have an open hole, maybe something like 12 mm or something like that. And now it's possible um, to transfer the crucible back and forward into the hot zone and from the hot zone to the cool zone again. That is how it's working. So now I want to start to work under hydrogen. So of course for safety reasons I have to close here now the top lid. So now you have a furnace which is under air because we had no gas flow inside this furnace yet. As the furnace is in air we start a flooding program and this flooding program makes sure that all the air um, is removed from the furnace and you see uh, we do that with a nitrogen flow. So, and this takes some time. The time is calculated that we have a minimum of 10 volume exchanges during that time. And then we are sure uh, to have no oxygen inside anymore. And then um, we switch to hydrogen and nitrogen in a special mixture. Again, for um, one minute, we have a very high flow of hydrogen and nitrogen that we are sure that we really have the starting atmosphere, what we want, as soon as possible. Because maybe afterwards to be more efficient with the use of gas, you want to reduce the hydrogen inside this furnace. But at the same time, when you start, you want to be sure that you have the atmosphere in the mixture you want. 
So for basically one or two minutes, we have a quite high flow here. And let us check it. Um, so we have a total of 600 liter per hour. And after this pre-flooding, we reduce it to a total of only 500 liter per hour, which is 400 liter hydrogen and 100 liter nitrogen per hour. So we have to wait. Um, but now you see this um, atmosphere is there, so the, uh, the flow is reduced to the flow the customer wants to have for his heat treatment. So now the atmosphere what we want is available and now you can start the annealing process. Yeah? Um, so we start the annealing process. Now a timer is running and to show it here in an efficient way and not to spend too much time, we set this timer to one minute only. But of course in the heat treatment, it depends on the sample, this annealing step can be one hour or two hours uh, or even more. You have the possibility to set this time here in the settings depending on your heat treatment. And here you again see the advantage to a continuous furnace because a continuous furnace always has the same condition. And here from patch to patch you can change it very efficiently. So let's wait until this annealing step is over which takes one minute. Um, and then we can start the next timer which is the cooling step. So normally we have for annealing we have the crucible and the sample in the hot zone of the furnace. And before I start the cooling, which is possible now, I will take out the sample to the cooling zone. So I take out the sample now, a little bit careful. You see the flame because hydrogen is escaping. And now through this flange, I push here the stick and I take the sample from the hot zone. Now I have it and now I pull my sample back forward and now it's in the cold zone. So I release it there. I take out the stick. And now I start my cooling process. Again, to show it here, I have a cooling process of only one minute. But again, depending on the process, on your samples, you can set it as long as you want until you are sure that uh, the sample is cold again. And remember, this cooling takes place in full hydrogen now. We have 400 liter of hydrogen, 100 liter of nitrogen. You can set it wherever you want. But this is the advantage, annealing in hydrogen and cooling in full hydrogen again. And um, it takes now one minute. Maybe we have to wait a little bit. Then, before we are allowed to open the furnace again and take out the samples, of course, we have to make a flooding step again to be sure that there is no hydrogen inside the furnace anymore. Where you can move your sample from hot to cold and vice versa. In full hydrogen, I start now the uh, flooding process after the process so that we are sure that there is no hydrogen inside anymore. You see this flooding takes place in nitrogen only. So you can, what I wanted to say, you have this movement from hot to cold and cold to hot in full hydrogen. Manual manipulation of the sample without any restrictions of safety. Because this is a safety related SPS, so although you move your sample, everything is safe and nothing can happen, even in case of emergency current, even in case of um, leakage of hydrogen or nitrogen or no pressure anymore. The furnace has full safety control for hydrogen operation. You see here a flooding tank, which is there, yeah, for instance, when we have a power failure or other mistakes which can happen. We wait a little bit until the flooding process is finished and then we can take out the sample again from the hot furnace. You have now the possibility you could cool down the furnace or you can leave it at elevated temperatures to put in the next sample. So it's quite efficient, it's quite fast and it's perfect for customized heat treatment uh, where you change the process parameters each time.
Now the heat treatment is over. So I can release the hot sample from the furnace and that is just what I wanted to show you very quickly an overview of heat treatment in a hydrogen furnace with manual movement of the sample from hot to cold. Um, please think about this furnace, it's really uh, in between the big continuous furnaces and lab batch processes, um, full hydrogen operation from room temperature up to 1000 degrees C with this unit with full safety of hydrogen. Thank you very much and we wish this customer um, good luck with this furnace and uh, a lot of improvements in his production. Thank you.